Hi, welcome to Auto DevOps. Today we're going to see how to create elastic GitHub runners in uh, Google Cloud. So in GitHub, we can uh, use GitHub Actions and create workflows for our uh, repositories so we can build our uh, pipelines using using that. But if we want to run these actions, we need to use some sort of runners that will be listening to events and trigger workflows and uh, execute the jobs. One thing I don't like is the fact that we need to keep the runners idle. So in this video, what I'm going to show you is how to create GitHub runners on demand. So we're going to scale from zero to the number of jobs that we need to run and then back to zero, trying to minimize the resources that we're going to use. So this is going to be a technical video. So I'm going to go down in the corner and I'll show you um, how it works. So I created the um, uh, demo repo where we can test this, right? So we have a workflow. So this workflow creates, so has three jobs, a build job, a test job, and then a published job. So each of them are supposed to run on self-hosted runner and each runner is labeled differently. So we have publish, we have test and we have build. So now if we look in the settings, we can see that we have zero runners listening for uh, for job at the moment. Now I'm going to submit a change to the code and see what happens. So uh, let's do a quick change. Uh, I remove a dot here and then I merge. So commit straight to main. So now this should trigger. So as you can see, we have our action here waiting for something to pick it up. If we look at the, if we go on Google Cloud and we look at Cloud Build, there are two builds that have been triggered, and I'll show you in a second how uh, this can, how this is possible. So now, each one of these build is going to create a VM in uh, Google Cloud. So now, if we move back, we should see both of them are completed. So now if we move back to cloud engine, we should be able to see two VM being bootstrapped. So when I click on this VM, if you want, we can inspect the logs from serial port. So this now is going to take a couple of minutes. In the meantime, we can, uh, look at the github page to see when new if new runner are registered so if i go here actions runners so we still don't have any runner listening to this let me refresh this page on google cloud so we are almost there so the bootstrap phase can be optimized. At the moment, I'm downloading all the uh, dependencies and using a um, CentOS uh, Linux 7, which is um, offered by, by Google. It's one of the uh, standard images from Google. So on this image, I am downloading all the dependencies and I'm also installing Cloud Init because it's my preferred way to configure machines. and. Uh, and also downloading the GitHub runner and starting the GitHub runner as service. So now, if you see, we have GitHub runner here has been started, it's authenticated, now it's listening for jobs. If we refresh this page, we should be able to see two new runners with labels build and test that are active and waiting for jobs. Now, if we go back to our action, we should be able to see them running so build and test are running. At the end of build and test, publish will be triggered. So a new VM is going to be uh, created. Now, if we look at what's happening here, we can see that these two VMs should um, 
be deleted in a few seconds. So if I refresh the page, Yeah, so two VMs deleted, a new one is being uh, created, is the one for the published job. So now this is gonna do exactly the same we, we saw before. I wanna show you a few things. So in uh, uh, this image is also labeled with the job name, the organization name, the repo name. So these are all useful information in case we need to debug or to understand which VM is running what. Um, the other thing we do is we have all the configuration is stored in the metadata. So um, we have a number of variables, as you can see, we have timeout, runner labels, uh, the repo full name and the registration token that is used to register the GitHub runner. The other thing is we have a startup script and a shutdown script. If we look at them by clicking on this little over here so the shutdown script is doing the runner deregistration so every single time the machine is deleted or turned off the, the runner does the deregistration automatically and the startup script instead is configuring and downloading some of the dependencies for cloud init so here, this is a simple script that looks for uh, cloud init. If it's installed, if it's not, it does the installation. After that, we have the cloud init that does the entire configuration of everything. So we create a new user called GHR. We download some packages and then we create some files. One with the shutdown service. So this shutdown service is invoked to terminate the machine after a specific uh, timeout, the one specified in the variables. And we also have the GitHub runner service. So this downloads the GitHub dependencies, uh, does the registration and execute the runner. At the end of the cloud init, we start all the services that we need. So as you can see, we start Docker, the shutdown service and GHR service. So now this one completed successfully. Uh, in the meantime, let's have a look at the, the VMs, if we still have one. So I think this one is about to be deleted soon. So no more VM. So what happened? After we triggered the workflow, we had three machines created on demand using Cloud Build. And these machines were assigned to each individual job. So each job was executed on the machine that we created and at the end of the job, the machine got deleted. So now let's see step by step how we were able to achieve this. So to do this, what I did, I used a new feature in uh, Cloud Build and new features in uh, GitHub. So if we look at Cloud Build first, so in Cloud Build, we have a trigger so i have a few tests i've done with this so if we look this is the elastic runner webhook so if we look at this the configuration of the cloud build trigger is based on uh, webhook events so this means um, every um, invocation can be uh, executed using an http post request so the webhook event works with the secret so we need to specify a secret in GSM that will be passed from uh, from the invoker of the webhook and we don't need necessarily to specify the source which is a good thing so we can use with multiple repos and then the cloud build is configured in line so we have this cloud build configuration um, copied and pasted here so I'll go through the different sections of the configuration in, uh, in, in a little bit so the other few things we can do is we can configure um, substitution variables. So these variables are partially filled in using an expression language. So we can extract all this information from 
the invoker payload. So when the webhook is invoked, uh, you can pass a payload and the payload can be inspected using this syntax. So what we do, we create all these actions and we populate them using the payload that is passed from um, GitHub. In a second, I'm going to show you how we do that. So um, we also pass a variable that is timeout. So this is uh, a timeout that we use for, uh, for the machine. At the moment it is 600 seconds, so 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, if the job is not completed, this will uh, terminate the machine. So this can be useful in case we have job cancelled, so our machine will always be deleted. Um, what I did was also adding filters. So I'm filtering on a variable. The variable I'm using is action. And I want to make sure we only create a VM when the payload that we receive contains as action the value queued. So we only want to have a new VM created when a new job is queued. So this is on the Google Cloud side. Let's have a look at the GitHub side. So in order to invoke the webhook, what we need to do, uh, we need to go in settings and there is an option in uh, settings, which is webhooks. Now, if we look at the configuration for this specific one, we have the payload URL and this comes from cloud build. If we go back to the cloud build configuration, we can see there is a little hidden button called show URL preview. And we click on this, it generates the URL that needs to be pasted in a payload URL. The other thing we need to do is set the content type to application JSON. It's not the default option. And then the in the end we want to be we want to trigger cloud build only for uh, specific events. So what we're gonna do we're gonna deselect everything and we are only gonna select the workflow jobs. So when we click this Every single time there is a workflow job that is queued, requested or completed, there will be a call to cloud build. So we save this. So now we have configured our GitHub repo to invoke cloud build to create a VM every single time a new job is queued. So now let's have a look at the configuration we created for cloud build. So I've documented this step by step and you can find the link down in the description. So what we're going to do um, is have a look at the configuration now that we use for uh, for cloud build. So in cloud build, we configure three steps. Uh, each one will create. So the, the first two are going to create two files. One is the cloud init file. So this cloud init file creates a user under the Docker group, then downloads some um, packages and does the installation essentially of Docker and uh, Git and then creates the service file. So we have the shutdown service. This is used to terminate the instance when uh, timeout expires. Then we have the GitHub runner service. So this GitHub runner service is getting all the information using the metadata API. So we download have the registration token using the metadata API directly. Uh, the other thing we do, we, we get the runner labels and the repo full name. So all this information are used for the runner registration. So after downloading the action runner, we register the runner and we pass the labels. The other thing we do, we use the ephemera flag. This will uh, terminate the process at the end of the job execution. So the ephemera flag makes the runner exit after the a job is completed. So and then we have a terminate uh, sh script so what we do as you can see we get the zone and the name from uh, the metadata api and then we do the um, uh, gcloud instance delete so we delete the instance that's why the instance disappears automatically after the execution and then we have the shutdown.sh so this is very similar to the previous one so what we do we download the timeout from the uh, metadata api and then we sleep for the number of seconds and after that we terminate the instance by deleting it. So the last steps in our cloud init script is uh, starting all our services and then we are done. So now the other thing is the startup script. This is needed only if you want to use cloud init because it installs cloud init. Otherwise you can pretty much move the content of cloud init, rearrange it and move it in the startup script. 
So the other script that we create is the shutdown script. So the shutdown script is invoked automatically by Google Cloud every single time a machine is terminated or is stopped. And we can use this to automatically deregister the and we can use this to automatically deregister the runner. So we need to call the config remove. And then at this point, we are just deregistering the, the runner every single time the machine is shut down or terminated. So the last step in cloud build is the gcloud compute instances create runner. So in this step, we request a registration token to the GitHub API using a GitHub token that is stored as a secret in a secret manager. So the registration token is now passed as a metadata um, to, the, to the VM creation along with the runner name and the runner labels. So the runner labels are coming from the cloud build uh, substitution variables and they are passed from the GitHub um, payload. So what we do now, we invoke gcloud compute instance create and we pass all the information that we need. You can configure the machine the way you prefer, change the type. So the other thing I do, I configure this machine as a preemptible. Obviously this depends on the workload you need to run on this machine, but for what I need, this is more than enough. So with the preemptible, you can save lots of money because the machine can be terminated by Google at any time. So since our machine will be up for 10, 15 minutes only, there is a good chance it won't be terminated by Google. So in any case, even if it's terminated by Google, the, the registration will happen automatically. So you will find that your job terminated unsuccessfully and you can trigger it again. So this is the configuration for Cloud Build. So as already mentioned, everything is in the description. So you can find and follow the step-by-step -step guide. It is very detailed. You can pretty much copy and paste every single piece of what I've done and you should be able to, to make it work. So this video can be completed with the other one I did a while ago about Workload Identity Federation and how to create keyless GitHub runners. So if you put them together now, you can have GitHub runners on demand that are also authorized on Google Cloud using Workload Identity Federation. So based on the workload that they're running, you can specify the service account and the permission that they can get. So hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye bye.